Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. And now, here's our host, Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. Welcome, dear listener, to Kardec Radio. Today, we are here to talk about the manifesto for a post-materialistic science. Can you believe it? It's actually a manifesto organized by renowned international scientists, including Dr. Schwartz, who will be here today disclosing about the the very contents of this beautiful document that proposes a completely different take on science. We have so much to share with you, and if you have questions, suggestions, or want to talk directly to Dr. Schwartz, please call us at 858-769-4705. Well, before we begin the program and I open the line to talk to Dr. Schwartz, I would like to... Uh, share with you that the Family Spiritist Retreat is happening this June. Yes, it's going to happen on the last Sunday of June, which is going to be June 28th. And you can register at familyspiritistretreat.org and enjoy it because it's a, such a beautiful event, something not to miss. It's a whole family event. All you have to do is go to familyspiritistretreat.org and do your registration. Registration is very symbolic to cover the expenses of a whole day of meals, activities. You even get a t-shirt, something memorable for the whole life. And if you are in England and you want to know more about what's happening there, in terms of the Spiritist Movement, just go to the website, busuk.webs.com, and the British Union of Spiritist Societies have planned lots of events. They will have their first gathering in the Spiritist family in the UK. Again, it's going to be in this June, too, and at the Oxford House in London. Just go to the website, busbussuk.com webs.com and get to know more information about it. Don't forget, Dr. Emma Bragdon is also going to be there talking about spiritism and mental health in a beautiful textbook that she wrote about it. And she's going to be there in London, June 3rd from 7.30 to 9 p.m. It's free admission. It's a Wednesday evening in London. Just go to the website, bus. Org UK and get to know more information about the address and everything else. Right now, before I open the line to talk to Dr. Schwartz, the show is live, by the way. Thank you, Jay, for asking it. We are live. You can ask questions, make comments, everything. We are going to stream a message before I open the line so we can talk to Dr. Schwartz, okay? It's a beautiful message. It talks about the kingdom of God. Before I open the line to Dr. Schwartz, right after this, Dr. Schwartz and I are going to be talking about the manifesto for a post-materialistic society, science. The kingdom of God is at Hello. Hand. Many times said the Lord, the kingdom of God is at hand. Until today, thousands of people have waited for its arrival through spectacular exterior events. Many expected through unspeakable cataclysms and feed their imagination with ghostly scenes incompatible with the divine mercy which presides our destinies. Thunders rumble in the firmament. Tsunamis and earthquakes 
mutinous crowds causing ruin. Flammable fluids in the atmosphere turning it into devouring fire. Withering bombs destroying entire nations. Those people usually count on the uncanny and the fantastic so that they can feel they are at the gateway of the great change. There is no doubt that such catastrophic events may take place at any moment in people's experience in the field of nature. However, far from meaning the kingdom of God, they only reveal the need for a new battle, with a rougher work to be done by those who take part in the evolutional boards of humanity. The kingdom of God is at hand, yes it is, but before all else, in our capacity to build it inside us, through the heaven that we can offer to our neighbor's soul. Let's attend to the accomplishments of the duties life brings to us, helping as much as we can for the victory of the good by following the love the Lord bequeathed to us, and we will reach, as early as possible, the celestial atmosphere for us and for others. That's why Jesus likewise was adamant and fair when stated, when they say to you that the kingdom of God is here or there, do not believe them, because, in truth, the kingdom of God is within you. Emmanuel, Psychography, Chico Xavier, Free Translation. Turn to our program after these messages. Getting to the Light Spiritist Therapy for Discarnate Spirits is a small book that offers guidance to spiritist practitioners and spiritist counselors. Purchase your copy at www.ssbaltimore.org. Nourish Your Soul with Kardec Radio. If you missed out on your previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Help prevent suicide by reading and sharing these books with others. Two great books are available to help in this Kardec Radio campaign to prevent suicide. Suicide, All You Need to Know by the international spiritist speaker Richard Simonetti. You can buy your copy at www.roundtablepublishing-uk.com. Also, Memoirs of a Suicide by the medium Yvonne Pereira. Buy your copy today at www.edi. CEI of America.com. Kardec Radio, live every Saturday at 11 a.m. Kardec Radio now offers more programs during the week and weekends. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you can follow the beautiful program God at Home with Francisca Kranz and the British Spiritist Community. They will brighten your days by doing a God at Home meeting wherever you are in the world while teaching you how to do the same in your own home with your family and friends. Every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you will hear incredibly inspirational Spiritist talks directly broadcasted by Spiritist Network. 
there will be true educational moments to carry out to immortality. Every Saturday, live interviews, bridging health and spiritism with the host Dr. Vanessa Anceloni. You may ask questions to the interviewed guests by calling 858-769-4705. And every Sunday, tune in to Spiritist Awareness at Cardiac Radio. You will hear a series of segments on a diversity of Spiritist topics. Cardiac will broadcast the Spiritist Moment with Kirsten DeMello, the reading of the Spiritist book by John DeRosa and Steve Shepard, Spiritist in Your Life with Drs. Marco and Joyce Magalhães, Spiritus and the Gospel with Luis Sergio Marotta, Spiritus Education for Youth and Children with Bernadette Leal, Spiritus Music with James Marotta, Neuroscience and Spiritism with Dr. Vanessa Anceloni, and many more segments coming soon. Enjoy it all and nurse your soul with Kardec Radio. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here preparing for the program, and we're, this program is about the manifesto of a post-materialistic science, which is really groundbreaking. And uh, you can ask your questions or make your comments as soon as you have them, because we are here live today, as usual. Exceptions made to when we travel and we can do this live. But if you go to the Gospel According to Spiritism, Chapter 1, you are going to get to know about the alliance between science and religion. This was a text published by Kardec in 1864. He said, Science and religion are two levers of human intelligence. One reveals the laws of the material world and the other the laws of the moral world. But neither, having the same principle, which is God, can contradict the other. If they were to negate each other, one would necessarily be wrong and the other right, because God could not possibly be willing to destroy God's own work. The incompatibility that is thought to exist between these two orders of ideas, orders of ideas arises from an erroneous observation and an excess of exclusivity on one side and the other. This has resulted in a conflict from which both disbelief and intolerance have emerged. This and much more you can read on chapter one of the book, The Gospel According to Spiritism. Right now, we're living in a world, as you know, of many people who are split it in their views of life. They think that life is either, either science or religion. They think it's impossible for science and religion to coexist and to complement one another, helping each other. But Kardec, very visionarily, in 1864, way before anyone else proposed it in the modern times, he was the one to un makes us understand about the importance of this vision. And I'll read to you a few excerpts of his proposal, which is in the Gospel According to Spiritism, Chapter 1, Item 8, The Alliance Between Science and Religion. And he says, Science and religion are the two levers of human intelligence. One reveals the laws of the material world, and the other the laws of the moral world. But neither, having the same principle which is God, can contradict the other. If they were to negate each other, one would necessarily be wrong, and the other right. Because God could not possibly be willing to destroy God's own work. The incompatibility that is thought to exist between these two orders of ideas arises from an erroneous observation and an excess of exclusivity on one side and the other. This has resulted in a conflict from which both disbelief and intolerance have emerged. The time has come in which Christ's teachings must receive their completion. 
And he, I will just skip this paragraph and go straight to the final paragraph. Science and religion were unable to understand each other until today because each examining matters from its own exclusive point of view. They mutually reject each other. Something was needed to fill the gap that separated them, a mark of union that would bring them close to each other. This mark of union resided in the knowledge of the laws that govern the spirit world and its its relations with the corporeal laws as immutable as those governing the movement of the heavenly bodies and the existence of beings. The consequences of this revolution are easy to foresee. As for social relations, it must, it must bring inevitable changes that no person has the power to oppose because they are in the designs of God and result from the law of progress, which is a law of God. There's much more in that Kardec's proposal, but uh, we, we're just bringing the main elements here. The discussion here is about how important it is for us to realize that science and religion come from the co-creation of human beings, meaning using the intelligence that God is given, we understand life from one or the other perspective, but they are not exclusive because they are complementary to one another. For example, I remember when I was doing some scientific research at the University of Maryland many years ago, and I understand, according to Spiritism, that the spirit is reincarnating little by little in its first years of life, the first seven years, that the the perception changes throughout those years because of the very reincarnatory process. And we were doing research regarding um, the development of the brain. So the teachings of Spiritism inspired us, inspired me, and I then I shared with my colleagues the idea of a protocol that we used and we succeeded observing the differences in the perception of those beings throughout the first moments of life, which is fascinating. So how much can we benefit in our daily lives if we incorporate these two views of life in one? And then like spiritism, they are complementary, science philosophy, religion. And in such a way, life will become much better. For example, when you have a disease, okay, when we have a disease, from a materialistic point of view, whoa, it's pretty bad. From a spiritual point of view, well, number one, it's a sign that a disturbance is being flushed away from my spirit, from my mind. It's being flushed away through my physical body. So it's a plus. You don't want to discarnate with all those nodules of disturbances in your spiritual body. No, you don't. Why? Because it's going to be disturbing in the afterlife. When you read the book Heaven and Hell, all the spirits, and I tell from experience as a medium, the spirits that are discarnated and they carry with them all the disturbances to the afterlife. They wander for many years, sometimes centuries, with those sufferings and with those single ideas in their minds that really make them feel bad and not even knowing that they are dead. So when we flush out of our spiritual system to the physical body in forms of disease, anything... It's a plus. The problem is, if we are creating more disturbances today for the future, so we don't want to go there either. So what is the best way to go, to do? What is the best way to proceed when we get to know we are ill? We get to know we need to treat with medical science, psychological science, and also spiritual science. If you have a center around, go receive the passes for anything, even a cold 
of course, if you're contagious, wait for you to leave, to be non-contagious, to be in public. But still, it's good to receive the passes, to drink the spiritually uh, magnetized water that we have in spiritist centers, and sometimes having a whole treatment throughout, because that's going to help you recover much faster. The spirits are going to be able to rescue entities that are connected to it. Because, by the way, from a spiritual point of view, many diseases are caused by the attachment of other spirits who are suffering. Either that, either spirits that are willing to do harm to us, or spirits who actually, they are just in that mindset of suffering, and then they create more suffering for us. You know, symptoms that you have, you go to the physician, you do exams and tests, physical exams, and they find nothing. It's a sign that something is happening in the spiritual dimension of us. So we need to take care of it. But we would say, as Emmanuel said, everything is in the mind. Everything is in the mind. So we need also a good psychological follow-up to make sure that we are taking care of emotional traumas, of uh, emotional issues in general. Because many emotional issues can turn into physical illnesses. And again, they are not bad. The problem is that if we're creating it out of simple ignorance, then why are we suffering? Because we don't know. The minute we get to know, we suffer less. So we would also recommend, besides reading Kardec's books, that we read the book, which is phenomenal, by Louise Hay from the Hay House Publications, uh, You Can Heal Your Life. At the back of the book, she has a list of diseases and thoughts, thought patterns that created it. And it's so valid because in 1858, when André Luis through Chico Xavier wrote the book Evolution into Worlds, he discloses in a chapter about predisposition to diseases. He says, our thoughts, when they go, and actions, when they go into the wrong direction, when we making us feel like guilty, creates nodules of disturbances in the spiritual body, and thus they will predispose us to illnesses. But the beauty of it all is we're not doomed to be ill. Okay? They say we are predisposed and it's going to depend on a second factor, whether or not we can counterbalance it. How can we counterbalance these disturbances? Because we're, it's not fatal. No. It's not a fatalistic thing. Like, oh... I commit a mistake, now I'm going to fall ill at some point in my immortal life. No. If I correct my thinking, aligning it, calibrating it, let's talk about calibrating our thoughts with a divine mind, thinking of beautiful thoughts, positive, hopeful ones, and then having beautiful actions, ideas, thoughts, actions, feelings, words, then we're going to be helping others. By helping others, we help ourselves. It's not selfishness. It's self-love and love for others. You see, that's how it works. It's not complicated at all. It's very straightforward. It's just a matter of calibrating ourselves. You may be asking, how again do we calibrate ourselves? How do we calibrate ourselves? Very straightforwardly. How? By praying, reading books that are inspirational and bring new ideas of hope and and, uh, illumination. Meditating, but most of all, as the spirits say, by being charitable. And what is to be charitable? Because that's how we gain health. What is to be charitable? To be charitable, as the spirits explained to Kardec in the spirits book, in one of its last chapters, it's actually the law of justice, love, and charity. 
there is one of the questions. What is to be understood as charity according to Jesus' perspective? Charity is to be benevolent towards everyone, be good towards everyone. It's funny because we are living in a world in which we are benevolent or goodwilled only to those we are, you know, we have something to receive in return, right? If you're my friend, I'll be good to you. But if I don't know you, I'm like, okay, fine. All right. Thank you. Bye. It's not charitable. We have to be goodwilled towards everyone. Second, be kind towards the, for the, the, the faults of others, which we're not. Which we're not. And third, forgiveness of offenses. Well, we're living in a world that still lacks a lot of these elements. We're not in a charitable world yet. But we are marching towards it. We need to begin it with us at our homes, and then it's going to flow naturally towards everything else. Right? So soon, as soon as we are in that mindset, everything else just unfolds. Correct? Yes. That's how it works. Now, when we have our calibration of mind through passes, prayers, meditations, reading good books, good conversations, conversations that build new energy. Then, towards good actions, helping others. And sometimes it doesn't take like much or even money to help others. It just takes good will. Then, everything else just unfolds. We will return to our program after these messages. Want to learn more about the ins and outs of mediumship? The book, In the Realms of Mediumship, by the spirit doctor André Luiz, through the medium Chico Xavier, analyzes the various aspects of mediumistic communication and mediumship. He also praises the efforts of mediums who are faithful to the spiritual mandate they received before they reincarnated, warning them about the risks of badly practiced exchanges between the two worlds. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.of.america.com. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide at www.spiritistmagazine.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Study Spiritism online at eSpiritism. eSpiritism is an online tool to promote the study and practice of Spiritism while contributing to the preparation of Spiritist practitioners. For full access to courses, go to www.e-spiritism.org. If you missed out on your previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Emmanuel's Novels The reputable mentor, Emmanuel, wrote a five-book series of spiritist novels that can truly transform your life. Starting with 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel delights our minds with the true account of characters that are so similar to each of us. Discover yourself in Emmanuel's novels and live better. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. And now we return to our program. Dear listener, we are here. We are here now and I have good news for you. Let's open the line because we're going to be able to talk to Gary Schwartz right now. Can you believe it? Yes. 
Hello, Dr. Schwartz. Hello, how are you? Is this good? Oh, it's perfect, and it's great. I know we have uh, missed you for the most time, and I was skeptical we would be able to hook uh, up with you today, but we made it. That's great. Wonderful, because there are many people who are looking forward to this. How are you? I am excellent, thank you. You (laughs) sound wonderful. I apologize for the phone number mix-up. Yeah, that's okay. It happens. It's okay, Dr. Schwartz. Everything is great. And uh, people are really looking forward to this wonderful stuff that you and the group took towards the manifesto for a post-materialist science and society and everything else. So we really want to know, how did it all begin? That's a wonderful question. In terms of the the concept of using the term post-materialist and then bringing forth ultimately this manifesto, it actually began um, with um, a Dr. Lisa Miller, who's a professor at Columbia University. And I had never heard the term post-materialist science until I was invited to a conference, a small working conference of about mm-hmm. 12 scientists and clinicians that was held at Columbia in uh, 2009. And she introduced the term um, post-materialist science um, to this group. And I was struck with the, the realization that the, the, the term post-materialist, which means simply to go beyond the, the, the conventional mainstream materialist perspective, was something that I had become. <laughs> I, I, I had become this and didn't know it. So, so here I was thinking in post-materialist terms, doing research in post-materialist terms, and um, was recognizing that the science was actually reaching the point which justified this turning point in history. Now, while I was at this meeting, I noticed that there were sort of two groups of people. One group of scientists were, if you were the word more, uh, this may seem sound almost funny, but they were almost more mainstream, more conservative post-materialists, even though there was no mainstream yet. In that, they were, they wanted to focus primarily on, on, post-materialism that applied when people were in the physical form. They wanted, and they were using a form of post-materialism which was still materialistic, meaning that they were seeing, let's say, paranormal phenomena like telepathy or precognition mm-hmm. as, uh, um, as primarily manifested ultimately from, from matter. And they were, and they were, they didn't want to see the field um, expanded to be um, more, if you would, overtly consciousness-focused, mind-focused, because that would bring it more overtly into spirituality. And then there was another group of scientists, of which I was one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so was Lisa Miller, and so was Larry Dossie, who was also there, Mm -hmm. who wanted the conversation to be extended at all levels that where it was justified which includes taking us to a greater spiritual reality, life after death, of course, and ultimately um, divinity. So this this um, this difference of opinion was expressed at the meeting, and after the meeting, I felt that that this needed to to be extended, and that it needed mm-hmm. to be more public. And so I proposed to, to Lisa that we have convene a second meeting. That we and we decided to do it um, in collaboration with the University of Arizona and host it, uh, thanks to the graciousness and, and the, the the wonderful gift of Canyon Ranch, which is a wellness corporation in Tucson, um, mm-hmm. to bring in a second group of people to who were um, who were clearly spiritual in their orientation. They were mainstream scientists, but they were spiritual in their orientation, and. And call it, we ended up calling it the International Summit for Post-Materialist Science, Spirituality, and Society. And to bring this group of people together with the goal of seeing, uh, you know, not only what's post-materialist science and what, and, uh, and what justifies it, but more importantly, how does that take us to a greater spirituality? How does that become the bridge 
between mm-hmm. science and spirituality. And um, and we invited a, a, a third person who had become a, a colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Mario Beauregard, to be a uh, the uh, second well, second co third co organizer. Okay, and um, and so the three of us then designed this conference, which I then hosted, and that's how it was birthed. Hmm, that's unbelievable. I mean, it's. I was looking at the document which people can access in opensciences.org. There is a summary of the report, and uh, it's just phenomenal. The summit, the whole discussion, I think it's something that should be done every year, <laughs> to tell you the truth, Dr. Schwartz. Because, uh, by the uh, way, I agree with you. Right? I absolutely agree with you. Um, by the way, when we held this meeting, um, mm. The question is, that's how the summit was formed. Now, how did the manifesto exactly. get formed? Mm-hmm. Um, the manifesto was formed because I and my co-organizers, we wanted to make sure that there were some, as well as many of the, most of the participants, I would say, I don't like to speak for all of them, but um, they all agreed to this, certainly, that we wanted to be proactive in this mm-hmm. uh, in this field and do things that could make a difference publicly. Okay. And we discussed various political things, political, educational, um, yes. societal, that things could be done, uh, in, above and beyond just simply what we have been doing in our, um, in our individual uh, you know, professional lives. And, mm-hmm. and one of the goals was to write a, uh, a, a summary statement that would, um, that would lay out as, you know, as cleanly as possible what was the justification and implications for a post-materialist perspective in a conservative language, but nonetheless forthright language. And that's what that was what was birthed as what we ended up calling the manifesto. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay. That's beautiful. And, and Mario and I took the primary responsibility for writing the first wow. draft in collaboration with all the members of the, of the, the group. And we wrote that almost immediately following the... Uh, the conference, and I proposed that it be published in Explore, um, and contacted contacted Larry Dossi, and and he made that possible. Wow, we report. have we have several questions to you, Doctor Schwartz, but we need to give a short break. When sure. we come back, I will relate to you some of the questions that we re- have regarding the report and perspectives sure. after that. Okay. Excellent. We will return to our program. After these messages, want to learn more about the ins and outs of mediumship? The book, In the Realms of Mediumship, by the spirit doctor André Luiz, through the medium Chico Xavier, analyzes the various aspects of mediumistic communication and mediumship. He also praises the efforts of mediums who are faithful to the spiritual mandate they received before they reincarnated, warning them about the risks of badly practiced exchanges between the two worlds. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.of.america.com. The Spiritist Magazine is a trimestral digital periodical that publishes the latest news on the Spiritist thought and the movement in the USA and worldwide at www.spiritistmagazine.com. Spread the word. Kardec Radio. To learn more about Spiritism. Study Spiritism online at eSpiritism. eSpiritism is an online tool to promote the study and practice of Spiritism while contributing to the preparation of Spiritist practitioners. For full access to courses, go to www.e-spiritism.org. If you missed out on any previous shows, no worries. We have an on-demand section of all previous shows and interviews. Go to our website at www.cardacradio.com. Emmanuel's Novels 
The reputable mentor, Emmanuel, wrote a five-book series of spiritist novels that can truly transform your life. Starting with 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel delights our minds with the true account of characters that are so similar to each of us. Discover yourself in Emmanuel's novels and live better. Buy your copy today at www.edicei.com. And now we return to our program. Yes, dear listener, we are here with Dr. Schwartz, and we are talking about the, how the manifesto for post-materialist science and society came to life. Uh, you can get a hold about the whole life and works of Dr. Schwartz by going to the very website, drgaryschwartz.com, and you get to know everything about him and the works and everything else. But regarding the summit and the the, uh, the, the, the manifesto, you can go to opensciences.org and you get a hold of all the information, including the report. So, Dr. Schwartz, Again, thank you for being here with us and for releasing this important, vital information that you're sharing with us. And you talked about eight scientists from around the world getting together in a summit and discussing about it. It's such a beautiful um, schedule that you had there that we're talking about having it more often. And here we have a listener Mark Lewis, who actually just asked this very question. Will there be another meeting such as this coming up? And if so, can we participate? Well, first of all, um, I would love it if another meeting happened. <laughs> I, I'm sure one will. And I personally would, would love it if, um, if, uh, if you and your group participated, in a partic- participated actively because you express this and live this um, in what you do. Remember, mainstream science is very far behind where Kardec was and and all of the people who were affiliated with him, you know, since then up till today. Um, and so that this is this is, if you would, science catching up to uh, to to life and to um, the nature of nature. Um, the in the cosmos, now, and I'm saying this, you know, as a scientist, as someone who was raised completely differently than people who, uh, m- many people who have been raised who are part of course. I, um, I should, I should point out, by the way, that even with at the summit itself, <coughs> excuse me, people varied in how overtly they um, wished to be in terms of feeling comfortable about indicating their spiritual side as opposed to the science side. And this is understandable because, you know, most of mainstream academia is is very threatened by a uh, post-materialist kind of uh, framework. Even though, uh, and the reason why we ended up when we, when we created this um, website, Open Sciences, uh, which is headed by uh, Dr. Rupert Sheldrake, and he's done an extraordinary job in 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 coordinating and overseeing that, and so on. The uh, the reason why we called it open sciences and not post material sciences was because there was some concern that that the, in order to invite science to come into this realm, um, and since there some of them are quote phobic, you know, frightened of the spiritual realm um, and spiritual thinking, that we needed to make this as broad and as friendly as possible. But for someone like myself, and, and certainly listeners, listeners of yours, um, you know, we're eager to see this, you know, this unfolding occur as, as quickly as possible for the sake of humanity and the planet. The importance of these document and the proposal behind it because my first question here is how much of a change does it propose is regarding the way we're doing science today well that's a wonderful question in some respects um, 
the it requires no change at all. And let me explain mm-hmm. what I mean by that. Um, mm-hmm. If we are a, uh, a scientist who is working with uh, conventional gravity, you know, things that, that deal with objects falling or baseballs flying through the air or anything that's sort of technological with um, uh, uh, in, in the normal physical world, we don't. W- Newton's laws work just fine. That is Newton's formulas, not really laws, but Newton's formulas work just fine. And we don't need to comprehend or evoke general relativity to uh, to explain it. Now, what's interesting about general relativity is, which of course it becomes essential if you're going to be going out in deep space and going at high speeds and so on. Um, what's interesting about general relativity is that it's not just a, a new set of formulas, which it is, but it also ultimately was a whole new way of looking at the very nature of gravity itself, because it said that actually our idea about gravity was wrong, that gravity is not, quote, a force. It's the bending of space-time. But that abstract knowledge doesn't really matter much. You know, if I'm going to drop a ball or even drop the phone, it will fall, and I don't need to know that. Okay. <sighs> So in some respects, certain aspects, the same thing with post-materialism. Um, post-materialism, for some aspects of science, it will go on just as it normally does. And people will use methods and they will use their understanding and it will work. It won't be accurate, accurate as in essence accurate, but it will work just fine. Where I think, this is my personal opinion, but where I think science will 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 change and change radically, just like it does with, with relativity, is when you start dealing with areas of consciousness and areas of, of, of life which require that we um, transcend the way we currently operate. And of course, a perfect example of that is, is mediumship, and mm-hmm. is the whole nature of the survival of consciousness, and what, and what happens when we start dealing with the connection between us and a greater spiritual reality or that, that greater reality in general. And mm-hmm. there, um, so, so for example, scientists who study consciousness and scientists who study the, the relationship of mind to mind and scientists who study things like intuition or scientists who are trying to understand the uh, relationship between, um, uh, between the mind and, and, and more complex forces, they're going to have to adopt the, a post-materialist perspective um, and our theories are going to have to um, express this, and our methods are going to have to take it into account as well. So in that sense, uh, the, the, uh, there, are, there are going to be areas of science which are already transformed, those of us who are doing it, and we're aware of it, and the others who start working in that area will understand <laughs> it. Now, having said that, in terms of the way we think as opposed to just what we do, in the way that we think, mm-hmm. I think this revolution is going to be bigger than any revolution in the history of humanity. Yes, it's bigger than the re- it's bigger than the revolution, of course, of the of the flat Earth. It's bigger than the revolution of the of the idea that the sun revolves around the Earth. It's bigger mm-hmm. than the revolution that we used to think that objects were really solid. This mm-hmm. transformation of consciousness, which of course you the uh, 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 for mainstream science, will be it has broader implications for the mm-hmm. way we live our lives and the values that we hold than I think any previous revolution. You know, has you're been. so right. But, but you know, Kardec in 1864, when he wrote the Gospel According to Spiritism, mm-hmm. interestingly, in the first chapter, as you know, he wrote this proposal about the alliance between science and religion. When I read the document that was released in opensciences.org about the summit and the manifesto. There is lots of caution regarding the use of the word religion. But when the eight scientists that put this together and brought it up, in their own experience, they mention, you know, religion here and there. So I felt, Dr. Schwartz, that there is still a big wall to be broken. Ah, yes. Right? Why don't you, why don't you, well, yes, why don't you state that more 
a clear clearly. Day. And yes. then I would be happy to comment on that. Because there is such a dogmatic uh, take on the word religion that there is this big barrier that I felt like when I was reading through it, I was like, hmm, there's so much caution regarding touching the word religion throughout it. But in the experiences mm. of the scientists, religion is existent. So you're talking about something that is not in the material realm. So we're touching su the subject of the interest of religion, but we're not mentioning it clearly. And I understand that. That's the correct. Why. Yes. Right? Okay. Yes. Um, let me draw the 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 in, in English the linguistic distinction between religion and spirituality, yeah. because even the word spirituality was was minimally mentioned in in the manifesto, and religion, exactly. you know, was even less. And in generally speaking, in English, the word religion refers to. Um, uh, a set of organized um, uh, practices and beliefs um, which are accepted and cohere at a at an typically at an organizational level institutional level so people who are religious belong to a particular church or temple or or group and they follow adhere uh, you know ideally they adhere to the the values and the laws and so on so if it's you know, if it's it's the, if it's a Jewish religion, you know, they're following the Torah, they're following the their the religious texts that they accept as uh, as as true. And if it's Christian, particularly if it's Catholic, for example, you then follow the, those respective doctrines, and they're not to be questioned. Mm -hmm. um, so religion is a social system, and it's a, it's conceptual, but it's a social system, and. Um, and of course, there are many different religions, and they 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 often do not get along. Then there are um, there's the word spiritual, and the word spiritual is more abstract, deals mm -hmm. more at the level of of subjective experience and uh, personal experience, direct personal experience, and it's uh, and it has to do with like like beliefs in something greater than oneself, um, mm -hmm. which is a very vague general term, which of course is broad enough to include the idea of whether you you think of of God or Allah or a great spirit or the source or a universal consciousness or an infinite intelligence or whatever words that one wishes to use for this 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 big idea. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, people can be people can be religious, um, and well, first of all, people tip you know many people are both religious and spiritual, meaning they belong to an organized group and they have hold these these more abstract beliefs and have these personal experiences. There are, and of course there are people who who don't hold either. Then there are people who are high spiritual but low religious. So they hold these beliefs. They they have experiences of God or angels or um or they've received after death communications or um the effects of prayer and healing and so on. But they don't belong to any organized religion. And they don't adhere or adopt any set of specific religious um, uh, guidelines. Believe it or not, there's actually a small group of people who are high religious and low spiritual. Mm -hmm. um, and these people who belong to and, and follow religious practices, they're part of the community, but they don't really believe it. Mm -hmm. So there are people who, for example, don't believe in God but go to temple or go to church. They're they're highly religious in that they follow the rules, but they're low in terms of their um, spirituality. And yeah. the so I and and we um, within the manifesto, you know, it's one thing to address the science and spirituality question. It's even more challenging mm -hmm. to address the science and religion question. Yeah, it, I I have the core questions of the summit here in front of me, and I, I totally understand the concepts, Dr. Schwartz, but the question that comes to mind often is, though there is this, there is a barrier. When we, when science tries to touch the subject of religion, it's so difficult or almost impossible. But on the same token, 
you know, trying to find different terms to accommodate the discussion of subjects that also pertain to religion uh, is positive. But, but, there is still a barrier. I know many people who go to study sessions at the NIH, they are scientists. But they have their personal choices religiously uh, regarded, and when and and talking to some de- some of them part- in particular, they say, you know, deep inside, uh, when I read some proposals, if they challenge my religious beliefs, it's hard for me to to pass on them. So ah, interesting, right? So it's now, something yes, that course. exists. It exists, and I, I wonder. Oh no, no, how... it is right. It exists. You know, you are. I leave it to you to raise such a deep question, um, and it's very special. What I think someday, and and post-materialists ideally should be brave enough to do that. Um, someday, what needs to be done is to is to have a summit of scientists who belong to different religions who are shifting from materialist to post-materialist thinking, mm-hmm. where we could have the conversation about one's, the, 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 if you would, how can post-materialism help bring religions together and help mm-hmm. us transcend our upbringing regarding institutions so mm-hmm. that we can act more on the evidence of spirit, the evidence of the existence of divinity, rather than our education about the way we're supposed to practice mm-hmm. because we because what I, I think if I hear what you're saying correctly is that we we need to transcend the, those historic barriers is that what you're exactly. saying exactly dr. Schwartz thank you for you know you're you're a brilliant thinker and that's exactly what I meant <laughs> in your special words <laughs> that's exactly what I meant because when Kardec proposed the alliance between science and religion, at his time, the word spirituality was not to any effect. It was not existent to the effect of what we mean. And he lined it up with the word religion and meaning all that is. And it's so challenging. But at the same time, if we don't break the barrier, how will we ever really engage on it? And and uh, the question is, and I think the summit brought many proposals that are so effective. The perspectives, what should be done besides the the manifesto? So uh, you say courses, meetings. Can you tell us more about the actions that should be taken f- from that mon- moment on to right. really well, yeah. boost well, it up? Again, I'm going to sound very boringly conservative. Because I, and what I mean by that this is that uh, there were certain things that like were just meant to come out of the summit. So that is, we intended to have come out of the summit, and I felt the commitment to put time and energy into making sure that they did. So one was the manifesto, the other was a second, and of course the, the summary report. Then there was the, the creation of a website that would inspire open thinking about science and so on. Then we um, we are editing a um, an anthology of about post material science, where where scientists who were both at the meeting, which is which were only eight were able to attend, um, yeah, but but more than than now double that amount to to create a, a formal book about perspectives on the po- this post materialist um, you know evolution if not revolution. So a uh-huh. book will be coming out. There's going to be a documentary, uh, whether it's short or long is unclear yet. But uh-huh. I, it, we had the we had the, the the summit professionally filmed by the people who did what the bleep, and so the we have all the raw footage of the entire meeting plus post meeting interviews, which were done oh. on the green screen. So someday, uh, at some point, the there'll be some video. You know things that will come from the meeting, so at least the full the full um, uh, understanding of about what happened at the meeting will be you know will be known. 
but but those those kinds of things and it takes time and money and you know and energy to uh to to produce these kinds of things but yeah. i think more it's more pressing which are the things of course that you're talking about is you know how do we advance this you know how do we advance this you know further and i think one of the ways that will happen and you're inspiring me to actually think about this so i mm. i would have blamed this on you um <laughs> but what would really be because y- you and your you are you are uh, inspired you know collective team of people um you're very good at at being able at at, at holding meetings and in taking advantage of things like internet radio and magazines and and the public media for bringing attention uh to the spiritism which is exactly what of course you're you're supposed to do in in your core realm but you're also defining this as uh, as bigger because you want to be able to have the full impact of all of this, you know, come forth. And I would like to actually suggest to you that you and your group think about conv- having a meeting on, you know, post-materialist science and the evolving spirituality. That you try to um, maybe begin a dialogue. Um, even across different religions uh, uh-huh. who are, and scientists who are not familiar with spiritism, for example, but where the goal is not promoting a particular person, yes, like like a Jesus or a Kardak or a Mary Baker Eddy or somebody yes. who was clearly inspired in their day uh-huh. and were so far beyond where most of us are now. I mean, they were so far ahead of their times. That, yes, but that. See, I think some one group, you know, people need to carry a torch, um, and they need to be exemplars, and and maybe that's something that your group group should consider doing. Yeah, you we have need all the to skills think... that you have. You have the appreciation for this. Your listeners ask the questions about this. You know, some group needs to take this, take the, you know, take advantage of this opportunity and take it to the next level. Yeah. Yeah, we are yet. Uh, actually, Dr. Stephen Post and I have been talking about these interreligious conversations mm. and uh, the importance of, you know, opening more and more doors, especially nowadays. There's so much need about greater religious tolerance. Even mentioning mm. the word religion is so tough nowadays. I remember right. showing a, a video of my daughter when she was 14 months. Uh, saying a prayer by herself uh, by the dinner table and uh, when people at work they saw it they were like oh and and when they saw it was a prayer they're like oh so it's as if like it's uh you mean it became negative yes it it's okay oh it's cute but when they heard it's a religious thing he they were like Turned down, like, oh, in the university, wow. you don't talk about these things ever, even, you know, in the hallways when such cute things happen. It's, like, prohibited. It's unbelievable. It's such a barrier. And it's so sad because we're talking about things that give so much life to everyone. It's as if you mm-hmm. cannot speak about science to a scientist, he will die because it's impossible. It's life for him or for her. Right. So it's the same. Like It's part of our lives. So we're living in a very paradoxical, conflicted society regarding our own values because we lack the ultimate tolerance to be able to mm. talk about it without undermining Etc. As you said, without creating any highlight for anyone, just learning how to talk about these things and bringing it together, this beautiful and inevitable allies. I think it's inevitable, the alliance between science and religion. If we, even if we want to, right? Boy, you know what I? Uh, yes, and you know what I'm also sensing. Um, mm-hmm. uh, how old is your daughter now? Eighteen months. Wow. And may I ask, and I've never done this on a radio show, but, but you can trust that my, that my, my, my intentions are pure. May I, I ask how old you are? May I, I ask how old you are? 
43. 43. Okay, yeah. beautiful. And by the way, I will confess that to your listeners that I'm slightly older than you are in physical years. I'm 71. <laughs> we'll be 71. Okay. Now, you had your daughter not when you were 18 years old, not when you were 22 years old, not yeah. when you were 25 years old, right? Yes. You had your daughter and, as a mature woman and as mm-hmm. a successful scientist and also a person who is active in the spiritual community. I mean, you've you have you've you've lived quite a life before you brought a little one into the world. Is that fair to say? Thank you, Doctor Schwartz. <laughs> yes, you're okay. very kind. Thank you. But you want the world to be a better place for your daughter because you're a mother now. Mm-hmm. And what it would really be wonderful to do <clears throat> is if your daughter didn't have to face these same issues when she becomes eighteen or twenty. It would be nice if this taboo could be finally addressed and ideally broken or healed, broken and healed, um, mm-hmm. for the sake of your daughter. And I'm using her as an exemplar, as a metaphor. Yes. For because the you know for there's a there's a Native American phrase that I heard many years ago, and um, the, it's and the, the, they and the phrase is. Um, May the work honor our parents, 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 and serve our children's, children's, children's. Hmm. So it's sort of looking, it's, it's, you're honoring at least three generations that have gone before, and you're trying to serve the three generations that are coming ahead. Hmm. And that's what you are doing right now. And, and so what I'm hoping is that this passion that you have, I mean, it really, your story about what, about, about, about your, you know, beautiful young daughter, you know, spontaneously praying, um, and you captured this in video, and then having, and then having people look at this and see this as scans. I mean, the whole, the purpose of science is to tell us what's true and to celebrate what's true, mm-hmm. and the bridging of science and spirituality, of course, is tells us that, for example, we know that prayer is good for us. I mean, empirically, mm-hmm. evidentially, it's good for us regardless of how we explain why it's good, how much of it's, quote, simply mind-body, how much of it is really connecting with the greater spiritual reality, how much of it is um, your daughter connecting with, with her ancestors, with higher spiritual beings, with, with God herself or himself or himself. You know, regardless of the, even the theories, just being able to celebrate that a, a, that you know, a young person is doing something that is so is so kind and so life affirming and spirit mm-hmm. affirming. Um, so anyway, mm-hmm. I hope you, you've inspired me. I hope that you that that that, that you are sensing this as something that you continue with. Yeah, thank you so much. And carry the talking. torch for it. Carry the light for it. Yeah, we all have uh, our things to be done here, and I thank you so much for being so insightful. But as you said. The new generations. I uh, I come from a, f- a fifth generation Spiritists. My great great mm. grandfather was Catholic. Moved from Italy to Brazil, and then he learned about Spiritism due to his wife's illness. And then from there on, he never stopped. And generations come, and the center, the Spiritist center that they founded, is turning a hundred years in the 2018. And wow. I tell you, from Listening to my, I I met my great grandmother and I talked to her. I was still a teenager. She let she lived a long life and my grandmother is still incarnated. And I talk to her often. And I know we've evolved regarding the taboos of religion, especially spirituality, on the earth. But there is this yet to be transposed barrier, which is the the unity of science, this alliance, I would say as Kardec posted it, I think it's best put like alliance between science and religion, mm-hmm. which is inevitable because otherwise we feel like we are living splitted lives. Mm-hmm. I know many people who religion is one thing, science is another, and science, you know, has become another religion in our days. Yes. Absolutely. Correct? Absolutely. 
in so many ways. What science says is we have these big problems in vaccination for babies because one person started this crazy and fraudulent science regarding uh, the fact that vaccine potentially creates autism and other things, which is false. But now the movement is there. And uh, many people are sick because they take religious uh, scientific findings as a pathway of life. And we're not saying this is bad, but we're saying it became dogmatic in so many ways for so many right. people. Right? And and exactly. I feel and the that's why we, you know, yes, in fact, the I think the manifesto, I'm, I'm trying to remember the exact words, but we gently uh, indicated that science was becoming dogmatic. It, it, the, it, that's why the it's that's why the word open sciences is so important. It's being open minded. It's being open hearted. When we become closed off, information, particularly where it's disconnected from reality, that's that is uh, that that's tragic for um, for any of us as individuals or for as a species. But Doctor um, Schwartz, don't you feel that you are are also rescuing, that's the beauty also of the manifesto, because you're rescuing the true scientific foundation, because the the greatest scientists of the past as well, they had an open-minded, they had no uh, aversion to religious issues. On the contrary, they were facing and discussing them very openly. So don't you feel this manifesto is also rescuing that true foundation of science, which is what you just said, right? Well, it, I hadn't thought of it in, in quite such a beautifully descriptive way. Descriptive way, but yes, it is rescu- It's rescuing the essence of science, and it's also rescuing the essence of the spiritual basis of re- of what be- what led to the formation of religions. So mm-hmm. I, yes, uh, I think rescuing the truth, rescuing truthfulness, which requires openness and kindness and humility and um, you know, uh, constant openness to growth, rescuing that essence is is very beautiful, and it's it's much better if somebody like you says it. So I'm going to quote you. Ah, thank you, Doctor Schwartz. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's there. I see the declaration of openness and the, the 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 way it's put together. It's really, as you said, it's the the greatest revolution ever because I think it's going to restore. And psychologically speaking, as you are in the field of psychology as well, it's going to bring more inner peace for people because I see clearly that people are living this comfort conflict this conflict regarding mm-hmm. the way they see life because for now they think it's how many people tell me if yours if science backs it up i am in if not i'm out then i mean how can we ever ever um back up everything if so many things need to be uh studied with a greater open mind so it's the paradigm needs to be shifted in order for us to go to this other level. So I can see how many mm. people are really suffering because they feel if they take something that is not uh, permitted by their definitions, they are not going to absorb it, and then they suffer. Wow, that is so beautifully stated. And I have to, I have to, the notion of restoring inner peace and rescuing inner peace, as well as rescuing of course, you know, as you said, you will see that I sent you a, a text message after mm-hmm. the what I thought was the when you when you disappeared, but the phone line was still on, and then I yes. eventually hung up, and then you called back. Fortunately, um, but after I sent you this de- this text message saying that I think that we were disconnected, did the show end? I sent you one of these little a little. Uh, uh, I don't know what they call it, an emoji or something like that, a little, you know, a little yeah. picture. But it was a picture that I had never sent to anyone before. Oh. And it said, peace and love. Yeah. Now, and the fact, and the critical thing is it said peace. And I've been having peace synchronicities over the past couple of days, so I'm paying attention to this. 
Mm. So when you spontaneously brought up the purpose, the, the goal of post material science and its implications for helping to restore and rescue inner peace, I'm just sharing with you that's that's a, that, that's a lovely synchronicity between us. Um, and I hope that maybe maybe you'll even write an editorial or something for your your magazine. The magazine. Um, Thank you. Yes, wow. putting forth you know your perspective in part using our conversation as a as a a, a point of departure. Thank you so much, Dr. Schwartz. I know there's so much, but we're just giving the, the listeners the website, opensciences.org, and you hear and you read about everything, including the files on the summit and the manifesto. But Dr. Schwartz, we'll contact you to have another program where we can discuss further and further. We have other listeners who have relayed some questions, but we will compile them and for another program. I want to thank you again and again for being with us and being so kind and at the same time so insightful, teaching us on spot about the things you've discovered and that you're really walking the talk. I can tell you're walking the talk. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. you. It's a privilege. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz. And uh, we also want to thank the listeners who have been so patient with us, so kind as well. And, you know, we're going to wrap up the program now. And let us all send the best of our love and gratitude to Dr. Schwartz and the whole group of the Manifesto. who are, They are the leaders of this movement of evolution more than a revolution, as Dr. Schwartz said. It's the uh, inevitable evolution on the earth. So you can participate. Go to their website. Contact them. Ask your questions. Send them your emails. And if you don't find it, send it to me. I'll forward it to Dr. Schwartz. And we can keep from there. In the meantime, wherever you are in the world, because we have listeners in 74 countries already around the world, in all states of the United States, we together can continue this by talking to people about this. One-on-one, family get-togethers, reunions. Share. It doesn't hurt. You're not imposing. You're just sharing. And if we don't share, how do we grow? We don't. So keep sharing because we are Kardec Radio. That's all we do. We share. Why? To nourish your soul. We're going to end the program today in the highlight of inner peace as Dr. Schwartz ended his very last comment. Let's cherish this inner peace, dear listener. Next week, we'll have another beautiful program, but don't forget, tomorrow, Sunday, we have a host around the world, Spiritist Awareness at 8 p.m. And on Wednesday, Franz Kranz, from Germany with Mac Mello from Massachusetts, United States, will read to you another chapter of Andrea Louis' book, Nosolar, Our Home, and discuss it. And on Thursday, Vanessa Childs from Seattle, United States, is going to stream another talk of spirituality and spiritism for you here at Kardec Radio. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write to us. We are always happy to listen from you. Thank you for listening to Kardec Radio, broadcasting live every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Email us and share your comments at www.kardecradio.com. Until next time, we wish you many blessings.